Hi, this is Craig Taylor, and the purpose of this screencast is to give you a very brief overview of the Doodle online scheduling tool. The URL, uh, the platform itself, can be found at www.doodle.com. Once you've navigated to that site and set up your account, and it's free to do so, you'll be taken to a page that looks very, very similar to this. If you single click on this schedule an event button, you'll be taken through to step one of a four step wizard to allow you to create your online scheduling event. Entering into here a simple explanation as to what your event is all about. That will allow you and obviously the people that you're looking at inviting to the session to be able to see at a glance roughly what the event is, is all about. You can enter a location into here if you wish to do so. If you don't, you can search um, using a map function to be able to look for a location, or as I've done, you can leave it completely blank itself. You can enter a description into this box here. Now, it is optional, but I do find that putting a description into there drastically cuts down on the amount of phone calls and emails that you're going to get asking you what the event is all about. And obviously, one of the benefits of doing this online is to reduce the amount of emails and phone calls that are shooting backwards and forwards. So this is a great way of being able to, uh, to cut down on, on the additional communications around this. You can enter your name in here and you can also, if you want, enter an email address. I always enter my email address in because Doodle then does all the hard work for me and sends me updates as to when people have made a preference choice in the online scheduling tool rather than me having to go and look for it. So again, it's another time saver by putting your email address in there. Hit the next button. If you've chosen to link your calendar to Doodle, as I've done my Google Calendar, your calendar will automatically pop up. If you don't want to link your calendar to this, or perhaps you're using a corporate calendar that's sitting on a private server and Doodle's unable to access it, single click on this basic calendar link here and you'll be taken through to a much less complicated looking calendar page. What you can now do is you can navigate through and look for the dates that are first of all preferential to you because obviously it's your meeting, it's your event, it's your activity. So you can look through your diary and you can look for dates when it's convenient for you to host or facilitate or to organise the event itself. But because this is an event um, that's going to take place after an e-learning network event, I already know when those e-learning network events are going to be. They're going to be on the 8th of April, 17th of June, the 15th of July, the 23rd of September, the 21st of October, and the 9th of December. So in terms of actually looking for a suitable date, that's already been done for me because that's when the e-learning network events are taking place. Obviously, if you're not trying to plan around another event, it's entirely up to you when you schedule the dates uh, for the event that you're looking at doing. Hit the next button. What time on those dates do you actually want the event to take place? If you always want it to take place at the same time, then you can just enter in the time that you want it to start, you can copy and paste the first row and as you've seen it auto populates every single one of those half a dozen Friday options that I've provided, it automatically populates a start time for my after set drink at 1600 hours. If you're having to plan around your personal commitments then it's highly likely that you'll need to enter in specific dates or different date or different timings for each of the dates of the options that you're given but it does allow you if you are trying to plan for the same time on different days, this does speed things up a lot for you. Hit the next button again. Once you've created your poll, you can do some quite funky things with it. But I have to be perfectly honest, I found it only confuses people at the other end. All I want to be able to do is tell them, give them some options of dates, give them some options of times, and ask them to select which dates and which times are preferential to them. I find that that's simple enough, so I'm just going to leave it as it stands and click the next button. Doodle manages certain different ways of being able to send that invite to the people that you'd like to attend. You can either enter their email address into this box here and have Doodle do the hard work for you and send the invites out. However, on this occasion, 
I don't want Doodle to do the hard work for me because I don't want to be entering your email address into this tool itself. I'd rather keep that private. So I'm just going to click the finish button and what that will do is a couple of things. It will send me through in the fullness of time an email to the address that it's got logged on for me and it will within that email will give me all the details of the event and it will also give me a URL that I can then forward on, send on to the people that I want to invite to the event itself. So there's a way of being able to preserve the, uh, the security of people's email addresses. It will also take me through to a finishing page which you'll see now in which it gives that participation link there it also gives an administration link there so I can administrate this survey in the future. You notice you've just heard a beep in there on the screencast and what it tells me is if I click on my um, unread emails we've got two emails there from Doodle and they're the links that I've just been telling you about that they've sent through to me with all of the information so that I can archive it in my email inbox. I can invite people by email I can share this URL here on Facebook or I can tweet this URL here through Twitter as well if I want to get a really, really wide ranging audience. So that's the way that you set up a Doodle online um, event schedule. Once you've set that schedule up itself and you've sent it out to people, this is what they will see at the other end when they receive the email from you and click on the link. They'll see the title of the event which you've entered in they'll see the title or the description of the event that you've entered in. If there is a location, that will also be in this top banner. There will be a blank box here for them to enter their name in. As you can see, it already knows who I am, so it's entered my name in. It's given me all of the available options that we entered in. It's given me the timings of the available options here, and I can simply go through and I can select which of these events are most suitable for me. I hit the save button and that will then generate an email back to me as the organiser or you as the organiser that Craig Taylor has provided an option in the Doodle Online Scheduler. And as we can see here, the new participant Craig Taylor just provided their information to your poll. So that's the benefit of providing your email address to Doodle, that information comes to you. Once you've set your account up and you can start to see that people are responding and people are providing feedback and people are letting you know which date and time they can make, in the true sense of Blue Peter, here's one I prepared earlier, this doodle was set up for some people that I wanted to invite to an online podcast. There's the title of the event at the top. There's a brief description as to what I wanted to talk about during the podcast itself these people down the left hand column were invited so they received that URL into their inbox I was able to do any time week commencing the 28th of February 2011 I always wanted the podcast to be between 10 and 11 and each of these people here then ticked boxes that they found to be of preference to them and as you can see Tuesday the 1st of March between 10 and 11 won out without, with 7 out of 8 people wanting to attend that particular date and time. So that's the date and time that that podcast actually took place. Really hope this has been useful to you. I'm sure you'll be able to find a lot more online and in the Doodle help section itself. But I just wanted to whet your appetite and show you how simple it was and how powerful this tool is. And um, Maybe see you online. Happy doodling.